Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are here wheel to wheel, Div 4, round 12, final round of the season. It's our Super Enduro at La Sarthe. It's a 13.6 kilometer track, 22 laps in total, so just under 300 kilometer distance, 33 corners. It is going to be a cracker of a race. You know, at the final round, there's a lot of, a lot of battles on the line here. It's going to be deciding championship positions, so, you know, pressure's on for all the boys on the track tonight. Uh, with me, we've got ZD, Untouchables, and Fine Moves. Welcome, welcome, boys. Hey, guys. Hey, Dale, too. How are you going? And I'm Untouchables. <laughs> How's things? Yeah, good man, good man. What a way to end the season here at the home of sports car endurance racing here in the uh, north of France. I couldn't think of a better round to finish uh, a very exciting season of uh, wheel to wheel racing. I can think of a better track. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I got to admit, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit jaded. I just finished off the 20 lapper and it was hell. I'm not gonna lie. You you did great, Zidi. You didn't have an off the whole race. Uh, you you finished strong. You know, shot up from eighth, worked your way through. You had a crack of a race, man. No, well thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think a little bit, uh, a few people are going to be a little bit disappointed that I didn't have it off. Like you know, Mister Bidden himself, Footner. I know he was probably waiting for me to bid it off. And also the guy that always um, ca kind of catches me bidding it, Mister Bagani himself. So you know, I just had that an image of myself not bidding it this time around. And yeah, you know, when I don't make mistakes, I can actually put in um, a good race. Alrighty, well let's uh let's kick this race off. So Everyone's in. The long, the long night of racing ahead, 22 laps, about 300 kilometers. Um, so, any... gentlemen, yeah, what do you believe is going to happen? Like, I've shown that I can see you can start from eighth and come up to third. Like, of course, Super Dragon and um, Intrinsic were first and second. Do you think qualifying will show their pace? I, I think it will. So, I think the difference with this division is, um, yeah, you qualified eighth, but you were within a couple of seconds of first, and then your race pace throughout the week was really, really up there. I think here we've got such a big gap um, between between the guys. Um, well, if you think about it, though, the, the gaps between the Division 4 guys are only like about four or five seconds, so for a track that's about, as away we go, but for a track that's about six or seven kilometres, five seconds really isn't that much. And Disco Bean gets off to an absolute cracker of a start. Already putting a massive gap in Fargo with Dodgy in third place. Yeah, so... Uh, Soul Sire pulls out of it. True Boss is trying to make a move around the outside of Soul Slayer here in that Audi. Um, what's the pick of the car tonight, guys? We've got a couple of extra manufacturers in here. It's, again, a strong showing by Aston, but um, what car would you rather bring in tonight, guys? That's a tough one. I mean, the Lamborghini's definitely got its pace around here, although I hear it is a, quite a handful. I don't have much experience with the Peugeot. The, the Aston, yeah, it's quick, but you need to fuel safe heavily to get four laps out of a stint. Oh, we've got um, the Intrinsic picks up a penalty. And so does... Two people pick up a penalty. Boss, that one. Last True Blast is burning it. Penalty. Jesus Christ, already. That's yep. not the best start to the race, but... Um, Welcome to South. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> down, down to 10, bringing up the rear. So, I think Figo is going to be a one to watch tonight. And Benjamin Disco, yeah, like he took out took out the uh, top spot in qualifying for this lobby. Yeah, he was 8 tenths up on, on Figo in second place. So, um, yeah, if you can keep that sort of pace in the race, he's going to be tough to beat, but it will come down to fuel strategy as well. Coming out of the Forza chicane, so he'll, he'll have to start burning that. And like a true boss picks up another penalty. Oh, oh what, right. a, what a shocker of a first lap. I tell you what, I'm kind of hoping Dodge he is in his quickly. left. Oh, God, oh no. That, no one wants to see a season end like that. Like, yeah, absolute shocker, but. Um, On lap one of a I very think long just... race. <laughs> It shows the frustrations that this track brings up, though. Guys, I tell you what, yeah. though, I'm on I'm on on board with Dodgy at the moment, who's um doing really well to keep up with Figo and Disco at the moment. I hope he can stick with that slipstream as as long as possible. 
Look, Dodge well, actually shown some really good pace at the moment. Like, I like throughout the week, he's progressively got faster. I remember from um, Monday through to Wednesday, he picked up five seconds. So he's actually improved. And in, you know, towards on Friday and Saturday, we were doing um, just race settings. He was he was keeping up with the fast boys. So I, you know, Dodge is probably a dark horse to watch out if he can stay. He's going three one to Indianapolis behind here at the moment with uh, Soul Slayer, uh, Viking Racing, yeah. Majewski. Majewski, the biggest loser there in that Soul uh, Slayer. Oh, Soul Slayer with a penalty. All of them picked up a bike. Oh, who's that oh, in the background? Luminous. Oh, Luminous has gone straight into the fence, head first. Tazzy, that's a disaster. Majewski let's see if we can. Well. Yeah, let's queue up a replay on that. Um, Talk see what happened there. He, oh, I've just missed it, damn it. I saw the, the fence feel, slam, that was about it. I feel feel like in the terms of Mike Raymond just didn't make the turn. Yeah, I think the strategy is, you know, right before that turn, you have to lift off, and if you forget to lift off, you're just going deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah agree with that. So the front three are pulling away, and then we got this, like, got a bit of a train from fourth back to eighth, is it? Seven. Look, it, that's not a bad thing because you've got you got two really quick cars in there. You've got the uh, a Citroen, which is really quick in the straight line, and you've got two oh, Jags. No. Viking. Vikings had to build, uh, had to build a penalty. Yeah. So you've got like out of slip. Ooh, he'll he'll make it because I think you know this Constantino effect. Just racing in a pack is just going to slow up the other t uh, other guys. But if they work as a team. They can pick up that slip. They can pick, pick up the uh, lead group. Yeah, well, they're not too far behind. You can see they're maybe... Who's up who's, who's up front of this group? Maka now. He's only four seconds behind four. that lead group. Yeah, but Maka's yeah. in that BMW as well, and the BMW not really the best in uh, top end, so hopefully... Yeah, and that, that's where you need to hope these guys are on comms. You know, if all source Slayer gives him a bump, is that BMW's heading straight to 285? Oh, definitely. And uh, we've shown in the um, Div 2 race with me and um, Vintage. Big shout out to Vintage, thanks for all the bumping around. Um, oh, every time. Was that fit? Viking again? Viking. Viking, you get a bit taily. Yeah, he's but, yeah, dropped so, off that pack. But like, if you if you get bumped around, like, yes, the BMW wasn't straight in the, uh, wasn't fast in a straight line, but with a, like a jag in front of it, it could keep up. I'm watching Majewski oh, at the Fygo. moment, he's giving Boys. Fygo. Uh, Fygo. Fygo. Fygo's Fygo's just sneaking yeah. to first. Ho oh, ho! Majewski nice and Solfo have just driven yeah. by Smacker Jack like he's nothing. Right. Who was leading yeah, the pack, Macca, wasn't he? I don't mind that. Yeah, he was, yeah, but... So, Macker Jack was leading the pack coming onto the Mulsan. He's now at the back of that pack behind uh, Majewski and Solfo. Hopefully that BMW yep. loves the slipstream there. Yeah, it, oh, it does man. like the slipstream, and this is where he can just now short shift the whole way and hopefully jump him in the pits. If I'm Macca, I'm not concerned about them getting back past. It's going to be an interesting battle up front too with um, Benjamin Disco and that Lamborghini he's able to keep with Figo, who I think... I'm surprised Figo didn't take out pole position in this lobby. Um, I think it, it could be the car, but... No, I think it was just that time in the car. Like he's he's, he's you know he's a new privateer that um, joined the league just recently, um, and you know the Peugeot is a bit of a handful. Not as much as the Lambo, but um, yeah, he's got very uh, low K's in that Peugeot. Yeah, he's and definitely quick though. We'll see him in Division One next season for sure. I've raced with him just quite a bit. The pack between um, fourth, fifth, and six, Macajack has fallen off quite a bit. He has done a bit of a bit of a drift go around Mulsanne Corner, but he is falling off from Solsay and Majewski. Yep. So the um, the Citroen really showing its uh, legs on the straights and getting helped. Solsay is getting helped there in the Jag as well, but um, Maca just hasn't been able to. Um, Except the slipstream is Viking behind him's got another two and a half second penalty as well, so things are going a bit from bad to worse there for Viking. Yeah, unlucky. Yeah, hopefully he can just settle down a little bit and uh, yeah, keep it between the lines. Yeah, and just quick run through the back of the field. We've got Gas and Greg, who I think missed qualifying, and Luminous in ninth. And we've got a couple of guys that couldn't make it tonight so they've had to pull out last minute 
Yeah, shout out to Matt Mitch and Tim Turtle and also Antichrist. Yeah, yeah. a bit unfortunate. It would have been great to see those guys in there, especially Antichrist. He's showing some definitely good some pace around here as well. Ooh, Figo's stretching yeah. his lead out. He's about to lose Disco's slipstream, I think. Yeah, you got a great exit from the Porsche curves there coming into these two, two chicanes to finish the lap off. Yeah, I think once he pulls away, that's it. That it's going to be game over. It's going to be a wrap for Figo if he can just break that slipstream. I don't know if it's going to be a wrap. Like, let's 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 have to go back to Div Two race, right? Um, well, I'm calling it early. <laughs> well, it takes is that penalty. Yeah, exactly. Intrinsic and also or a mistake. Intrinsic in twice in that race made two massive mistakes where he just missed his braking right. marker at. Um, both the international, in the Indianapolis um, chicane there and dropped off the back. He made his way back up and then when he was in second place towards the end of the race, he did it again and gave just um, Super Dragon an opportunity to just run away with the um, runway of the race and that's what happened. Ooh, the Lamborghini. This could get sideways. Yeah. And Dodgy's now catching up a little bit. And there's a four and a half second gap back to fourth with mid risky doing well man he's 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 had a lot of struggles this season but doing well so far in this race yeah what's, what's the name of that car the safety vest at the moment with all the orange safety bright orange vest, all yeah. over it that's it <laughs> looking great on track there citroen does look a bit thirsty on its petrol though he is falling well but well <laughs> past the halfway line the drivers around him he's still got a half tank to go so yeah, there's a chance he's on three laps since looking at that then. I'm not sure he can make it through to four. Oh, uh, yeah, and oh, again, we can go back to the Div 2 guys. Tombo, you know, Tombo, one of the fastest guys in wheel to wheel. Uh, unfortunately, with the quality that we have in the Premier League, the Premier League got busted back to Div 2. Um, you know, a very quick guy, but because he's on auto, was unable to fuel save and was resorted to uh, the three stop strategy and was just forced to the back of the pack. Yeah, wow. Yeah. He, he was forced to make two extra stops compared to the rest of the field, so that really didn't... Yeah, that really hurt him badly. Raw so pace, Z, he was you there. Just, you've come from your race in Div 2 earlier on tonight. How, how much does pit stop strategy play into this race tonight? I know we, we haven't really agreed on changing around with the tyres, but how does uh, fuel and pit stop strategy and running laps really affect your race? Absolutely a lot. The only thing, the only reason why I could keep up with the lead group was I was fuel saving. Um, and every time, I was like, yeah, I'll have hats off to Super Dragon and Intrinsic. Um, they, they were just faster around the track than I was. Um, so the only, the only thing that saved me is that I was coming in with about 10 more leaders than them every stop. So it plays a massive mm, part. Interesting. So that, what are you, you're in the Dodge, is that, no, you're not the Dodge, you're the, uh... I was in, I was in the Jag. Jag, so that's pretty good on fuel, eh? It, 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 I was fuel saving, like, I was, uh, absolutely half shifting here and there just so I could keep up, this, not lose too much, um, speed, but just, uh, making sure I use just enough to keep up the pace. Like, I was very fortunate, the Jag is a very low car and it's got a massive top, um, top end speed, so, like, fuel saving that way probably say that the absolute power of it probably saved me as well yeah Figo had a had it nearly Almost a two, two second, second lead and he's me. yeah just made a few yeah just a few mistakes at the moment just looking at his um split time just made a few mistakes in the last two sectors and that's what um gave uh Ben just coming back on to the back of him Dodgy's yeah, running some solid laps at the moment. Oh, definitely, man. A few of you guys did the full full race rehearsal this other year, so he, he did a 22 lapper, I think, yeah. this afternoon. He's a read that. He did a 22 in. lapper today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he did. He dives into the pits. He's on three lappers at the moment, so All right. that is uh, okay. very thirsty. Yeah, that's definitely going to hurt him the further we get into this race. I think he'll probably drop a bit back down. Quite, quite a well way down. And just was on board there with Viking again. He had to burn another penalty, so that's three laps in a row he's had penalties. So 
Um, he's just going to have to readjust his lines a little bit, maybe um, take a bit more break into the corners. I'm just looking at the fuel strat. Like, everyone seems pretty... And Dodgy picks up a penalty. Oh, he's going so... He's, he's still with them, but he's just picked up that half a second penalty. Unlucky Dodgy. Yeah, it's, it's only half a second. He can burn that after Indianapolis and Super Dragon showed us in last race without really losing too much time. Yeah, he's cool. Especially with uh, something like, as powerful as the Aston. Just get up to top speed and then just back off. Let it burn seconds. I, I think I have to do it once or twice in the Jag and just burnt it off. And then went through and it just nailed in that Indianapolis and it looked like it didn't lose any time at all. So guys, we've got a couple of, we've got a couple of drivers here who've submitted some bios for the race. Uh, being a nice long race, we do need a bit more to talk about. Let's jump on board with our leaders um, bio here. So Fargo, he's written, he's as a newcomer to the series. It's taken two years to take the plunge into wheel to wheel. The wheel to wheel community has been very welcoming. Wish Sims had more tight street circuits. Looking forward to more close racing. Love 80s and 90s era of motorsport. So the height of the Group C era. Just when you think Le Mans, you do think Group C. Um, the, the era of motorsport and mainstream sports cars. Uh, can be known to have a chocolate or two whilst on the sim. Cherry Ripe, of course. Love the occasional night of craft beer, burgers and whiskey. Yeah, nice. Nice. So quite a reliable guy to most of the wheel to wheel drivers by the sounds of it. Yeah, no, I know, I know that um, vintage captain talking, you know, just chalk and cheese with him. Like, he'd always ask him to um, race. Like, I know that on, throughout the week, Figo and a couple of other guys have, I think, Figo, Vintage, Bike, and D Man race together. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, it was like Figo, Up You Baby, Vintage. Shans, these guys always used to do the Monday night practice like sessions together. So yeah, that's and they've managed to convince Figo to join World to Wheel. So yeah, that's great. He's another fast guy. It's going to make it even harder to jump up the yeah, big he's one. Quick. He's quick. <laughs> it's just gotten so competitive over this last season and a half. Just so much influx of talent that it just shot straight up. Yeah, well, let me see if I can bring up some of the leaderboards uh gosh where is it here we go actually let's start with the team leaderboard so team vintage man it looks like they're going to walk away with it this season They've yeah definitely uh, they recruited well um you know picking up uh who was it tug for a very cheap price and tug yep. just freaking absolutely murdered people when he's been racing and they had a good internet mm. And then Zoologists have crept up into second spot just this last round. So they're up in second, and they've overtaken us, uh, Slip Jam, in third. Uh, and that rounds out the top three. So How do you the team leaderboards. Um, yeah, be a tight battle for that uh, podium position there for the team leaderboards. How far? Uh, boss Track. Boss Track's about 2,000 points behind, so it's going to be a fight for second and third this weekend and next weekend as well. Ooh, mm. that's interesting. Just for having the first round of pit stops with Figo and um, uh, Bedroom Disco in the pits. And actually, Figo, even though he was leading, just has one more liter of fuel over Bedroom Disco. So we'll see what happens, boys. Ooh, Soul Slay is low on fuel. Dodgy's... That's going to... Seven liters, that's about a second, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like, the thing is, like, for me, like, I, you could... Like, people did underfuel. I just... You know, it went to 100% every single time. Like, yeah, I would have lost a little bit of time in the pits. Um, but I just said, you know, just in case I needed to... Ooh, and Ben underfills. That's interesting. That's an interesting strategy with Ben. But, like, for me, it's like... Yeah, right. It's better off having a bit more heavier car. Something that I'm used to, because I've been doing a lot of practice with the heavier cars. Like, you know, and don't push it. And then just... And then have that, like, security blanket. So if I had to push or catch up to someone, I knew yeah. I had to feel good. Yeah. So Madriski oh, has popped out in between Dodgy and Soul Slayer. He's got about oh, three nice. seconds on Soul Slayer. He's about two seconds behind Dodgy. Yep. So, so he pitted early. He's yeah, going to finish yeah, up a bit of time, though. Stuff. Ooh, actually, that's very that's very interesting, gentlemen. I think Ben might be going for his three stop 
Australia three now. Laps dip. Yeah, he's doing yeah. a three lap dip now. You've got to do two, three lap okay. portions, yep. otherwise you've got a two left over. So this might be a bit of mind games, I'll just get it out of the way. Interesting, interesting strategy. Uh, you know, that, that's probably one of the better things with the Super Enduro. It also comes down to the strategy, like um, we saw tonight with Tombo, as we said, the th doing a three-stop strategy right through doesn't really work. But, you know, that's that doing those four, th four stop strategy, um, four stops, and then um, moving to a, uh, two, three, uh, three lappers. So that's probably the ideal strategy, unless you can be absolutely ridiculously fast and do a five stopper, five lapper. Well, if you think about, yeah, if you think about the three lapper stint versus the four lapper stint, there's about two extra stops there, and a pit stop costs you about 30 to 40 seconds here around the SAR. So there's about nearly uh, 80 seconds, really like about a minute and a half. You've got to try and make up on track. You're going to try and run that um, those extra two stops. So it's a big ask. Um, yeah. Just trying to make one, uh, leaving one lap on the table there per stint. Yeah, agree um, with with Pombo's situation. I mean, if you could just get that one less stop than he than he did, he, he would have made that time on track. It's just yeah, that second stop's too, just way too much. Tell you what, it's worked out. That pit strategy has worked out well for um, Midrisky, who can now sit behind Dodgy and save some fuel. Yeah, let's see if he starts short shifting or if he's going to rev it out. I'm not really sure he's. He yeah, seems to be pretty much revving it out. He's revving yeah, out, yeah. But that, you know what? I'll tell you what, if, if someone gets him in a team next season, like that, that's one of the advantages of joining a team is you get the tips of. A lot of guys don't know a whole lot about short shifting, so it can make a big difference um, if, you're, if you join the right team and they're able to share some uh, driving tips with you, so. Yeah, he could yeah, definitely I benefit can... from a bit of short shifting knowledge. And I can also... definitely vouch for that. I think that's also uh, that the highest. Thing. Picked up two and a half seconds to Indianapolis. He's running slow. He's going to lose no. position to Jack. Maybe. Ooh, no, just gets it's all. But he's goes he's goes wide. He's going wide. Keeps it together though. That Jack's going to take the pass on Soul Slayer. So Mac and Jack up to the top five at the moment. That's lost him a lot of. That's lost uh, Salsa a lot of time there. But it wouldn't take him goes... long to get back past Maka though, with the speed difference there. Yeah, but definitely. Can he, make the, can he make the time up to Madriski though from the the penalty there through Indy? Well, Madriski and Dodgy are um, battling at the moment, so that like Madriski is actually getting held up by Dodgy. Um, that Citroen is definitely a lot faster through the Porsche curves compared to the Aston. But yeah, back to the point of like fuel saving and everything that you were um, saying with there um, before the fine moves, it's harder when you're a privateer. Because you know, you, you're by yourself. Yes, you still got the lobby and people can still pass information to one another because you do put, you, you are put into a forum where people have the same cars, but that information isn't as free throwing as say like, you know, um, Team Vintage, who are all in BMWs, and they could help each other. Like, and you have that constant learning yep. of the car that you can go. All right, yeah. this is the best um, fuel strategy, and this is the best. This, you know, around these corners, we can go a bit slower or a bit faster to save tires and fuel. So, yeah, it's yeah. a bit harder. But once you join the team, yeah, not for sure, man. It's a good strategy too from uh, Vintage, all going BMW, so they can. I mean, we un unfortunately with our team, we had. Mustang and what did we have the Corvette so our knowledge is just useless to the Corvette drivers yeah uh, I wouldn't say so like they're both they're both front engine American muscle car so there is some um, transparency between both of them but the little the little finite things on like tyre burn and maybe fuel burn might be a little bit of a difference here or there but I feel like the, uh, the style of the car we both chose um, sort of made it a bit more helpful or made it a bit more easy for us to share tactics as uh, Figo's picked up a half second penalty down the um, down the Mulsanne straight through the Forza chicane. 
So I've just been following Madriski for the last lap and a half, and I think he's he, I think he's picking his spots. So he just he seems to be short shifting in certain areas, but not others. So I think he's just trying to really bridge okay. the gap and get the toe before he goes into full short shift mode, because he just seemed to be about two three tenths out of the slipstream from Dodgy. Yeah, going back to your point again, um, fine with I have to, I have to agree with fine moves. I think. If everyone jumped in the same car, like if I decided to jump in the Aston, I think I would have been quicker because you know, I you know with Team Motor Inc. Sport with Squid and um, Super Dragon, who were all like everyone was in the Aston except for myself and K Boy, who were in the Jag, and like with K Boy not racing all the time in the season, it was hard for like someone like a Super Dragon or someone like Squid to coach me around tracks. Like, yeah, they gave me a few to- pointers and they can, like, watch me around mm. track, but because they weren't in the same car, they couldn't just automatically go, all right, this is where you're going slower. Yeah, well, ZD, man, you've managed to figure a few things out these last three or four rounds. You're, if you look at your the leaderboard, your points have just, like, skyrocketed, like, from about round nine onwards, eight no- or nine onwards. So, um, yeah, you yeah. figured something out. <laughs> He's got um, half your points from those three rounds. Just gonna uh, butt in again, boys. Soul Slayer and Macajack had been fighting since the uh, the second chicane, uh, the Michelin chicane. Uh, Macajack picked up another about uh, 1.5 second penalty, burnt down Mulsan. Uh, Soul Slayer was sticking behind him, and then Soul Slayer made the pass going up towards Indianapolis. Um, but Macajack's still carrying about a 7 tenths second penalty at the moment. That's unfortunate. Well, and yeah, I like Vigo. it in Vigo has to still burn off that. Um, Fargo has to still burn off that um, penalty as well. As well, we're probably just under a point one of the second penalty. He's burnt it now, isn't he? I think it's st- uh, still point zero, so he's got a little bit left. I'm seeing four tenths. Yeah, I wasn't seeing anything. Yeah, yeah Vigo, it's so. gone now. Yeah, it's gone now. I'm still seeing three tenths on my screen. Ah, uh, GT's foot. Oh, no, no, we're talking about Figo there. Mac has got three tenths. Figo still had a little bit to go. He's really burning right at the last there through the four chicanes. It's, uh, yeah, Benjamin Disco on his, uh, what was this his three lap stint, was it? Or, his, or yep. two? This is his, no, I think he's doing a three lapper. Yeah, this will be his in lap. He's got about a quarter of a tank left. He'll be in this lap. The mind games have started now. So we've got yep. Madriski and Benjamin in this lap. Oh, Madriski's starting to jump around a little bit. So, um, Fibers and Dale, knowing that you guys are Div 1, like, what are you taking from these lower races, knowing that you guys will be racing next weekend? Um, knowing- yeah, just... Just tips on strategy, really. Um, kind of what's working, what's not working for for them in terms of pit stop strategy. I'm not going to give too much away. We've still got a week to go. <laughs> <laughs> and yourself, my moves? Yeah, no, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not racing next week, so I'm, I'm okay. taking that's season wrap for me. Uh, just ha- I'm happy enough to just spectate these la- the last round and um, yeah. Some, this is it's going to be some great racing for round 12 we're managing to live stream all six lobbies for this round as well so big, yeah big all six lobbies being for, commentated uh, yeah big first that's a first sure um i've got to say though i i joined wheel to wheel last season probably in the last two or three rounds of um last season but um the, I'm sure some of the senior members of Wheel to Wheel would have been happy with the explosion you guys have had this season going from four four lobbies up to six, almost pushing that seventh lobby as well. Um, mm. And just with more and more drivers wanting to get more and more involved with all the um, behind the scenes stuff like the commentary, the hosting, the data entry. That's um, it. Still probably. Probably looking for another person, another guy to visual for you. Yeah, sure. so hopefully we get Flossie helping out, like maybe next season. He's got all the gear necessary to do the the visuals. So 
it's just that the software has just been really buggy lately um so uh the updates that come out for Streamlabs have just thrown the apple any apple users into a bit of a spin this week but uh if you're on a pc i think they're good um but yeah we're always looking always looking for more guys to help out with commentary and streams the visuals so, so what does it take? Uh, give us a quick rundown of what it takes to do visuals, just for anyone who's interested. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, basically you just need a, 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 a fairly quick computer, I guess, with a good processor and uh, the software we use is Streamlabs and um, you need a, a video capture card like an Elgato or something similar to be able to capture um, H HDMI signal into your computer. And then, um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, just a good computer and a, a capture card, like an Elgato, is, is what most people seem to be using. Oh, nice. Thanks for the update. Yeah. So, five moves, knowing that you're, you, you, you created Will to Will, how, did you ever think that it will become this big and this popular? I didn't really think that far ahead. It's just... I saw a bit of a, a, uh, a need for a league which um, would allow all me members to, to to vote, contribute, like a very de democratic type of a league where it's not necessarily run by one individual. It's just like the whole this whole wheel to wheel community get to vote on every aspect of this league, including even the name, which uh, <laughs> yeah we we vote on everything. So we got season seven coming up in a, in. Uh, end of January sometime but we'll, everyone's going to vote on like the format for season 7 uh, through to the track selections the groups of cars uh, yeah what it's just yeah I, th I, th I think a, we just needed it I think GT Sport needed a league like that where anyone can jump in and contribute in uh, in gosh any any particular area of the game we've got commentators uh visuals data entry guys stewards livery people um yeah no oh, yeah thanks for that and also just a quick up um, race update we've got benjamin disco again doing looks like he's filling up for another three stopper i mean three lap path at the moment so interesting tactic he's gone he's gone earlier i thought we might have um left the last um, three lap towards the end, so you know you have got tyres towards the end, and um, you can go full tilt and race. Ooh, oh, couple of our others. going sideways there. A couple of our other stoppers as well. We had Madriski come in. He came out around with Viking Racer um, through the Dunlop curve into the Dunlop chicane. He's quickly gotten back past him. Uh, we've also got War Soul Slayer as well. He's dropped the jumped into the pits as well, he's filled up and ready to go for another stint but unfortunately Ooh, mid risky gets a back. tap <laughs> I think uh, Viking Racer is just showing the speed of the Jag <laughs> he was half he was half throttling and still making up time on that uh, Citroen so yeah it was just ridiculous like, that Jag is just an absolute animal dude. like he's half throttling now, he's, oh, this is, he's just chilling behind it, just using the slip yeah, should we jump on board with that? Oh, should we get um Viking Racers bio down? Here's another one similar to bio here, just to help out with the commentary. Yeah, let's, let's jump yeah. on with Viking Racer. Another commentator, a uh, very wise old fox. Um, I've had plenty of close door-to-door -door racing with Viking, so yeah, let's get up his bio. Yeah, so he he's he's submitted in that he was a, a manu he was manufactured in uh, '59 and ICU for Chevys as well. This is his second season of wheel to wheel racing. He lives in a uh, Taranga Bay Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. I've probably butchered the name of that. Um, he raced carts for ten years, um, motocross for ten years as well. Um, he's managed a couple of teams in uh, New Zealand. In, New Zealand Championships, including V8 Utes and production cars, has worked with the classic Formula Fords as well. Uh, he's got a couple of toy cars here, a 74 Corvette and a Lotus 7. Rides a KTM 790 Duke as well, so uh, the old dog's definitely got some tricks up his sleeve and sounds like he's still about as young as 21. 
Nah, definitely. Viking Raider, an old, an old fox. Very wisely, I've got to admit, um, one of the guys who took me underneath the wing, and also the Golden Mullet out there as well, D-Man. Um, just to help, and also I've got a big shout out to uh, Vintage and Rexy as well. These are some of the old guys out there in the um, the league. Like when I first joined up, I wasn't as quick or as fast or as wise um, around the racetrack, and those those guys who've got these experience have definitely taught me a thing or two about how to race properly and cleanly. I well, just have just have a guy like Viking in wheel to wheel with so much real world experience in um in motorsport. It just shows that again a year such as this, a year that no one would have expected, has just brought um, sim racing as well as real world racing so much closer together, and just shows that there is the other opportunity. There is an opportunity there if you are good enough and if you are fast enough in sim racing to potentially go in and become a real world driver um i think we've had a, uh, one or two drivers from the gt world tour end up um racing real world and and vice versa were the real world drivers when they got bored in their um in their lockdowns brought up their sims brought up their cockpits their racing wheels and started racing Yeah, and Viking's yeah. been a natural in the commentary box. He's he's been great with whichever you know whoever he ends up with from week to week. So it's great having him in the commentary box. I tell you, some of the commentary lineups of the the final round of the season were absolutely loaded. I just have um have um who was it Rexy and Footnote commentating Division Two tonight. Oh yeah. Was... Footner making his return. Always a, always a pleasure. And Rexy too. Was it Rexy's first time back in the box? Yeah, it was. I mean, I've, I've, Rexy's always been fun. I've, always, I've done, I've, especially last season, I did a lot with Rexy and always a fun book to like, have, a, uh, have, a, have a yarn with. I never, I never had the opportunity to um, commentate with uh, Footner because he's always been a did one guy and unfortunately... Oh, oh we're going to put you two together. <laughs> 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 we're going to put you two together. Ah, oh, the rivalry still remains. <laughs> well, I gotta admit, I am. Well, he, he he was trying to commentate that I might be Mr. Bitter today, and I did it. So I'll be eagerly waiting his race to see if he actually bids it as well. So <laughs> let's see how we go. Man, the way he's man, the way Footner's driving this Lamborghini, he's gonna be Mr. Win at this round. I don't know. He's gonna have a really tough uh, time with Tankmaster there as well. He's showing some incredible speed. True. Tank's quick. In the Citroen. Tank is quick. That'll be a good battle. So that's next week. Division. They're in the Division 5 lobby, I believe. So that should be a good race to watch. It will be. And of course, you know, the Premier League guys, a lot of fast guys there. Probably talking to all the guys who've just raced and trying to get tactics here and there. Um, but yeah, you know, you get likes of Apex Humper, you know, Adam V10. Um, Captain Squid, my boss, great shout out to you. You know, Pure Axel as well, setting the fastest time around here out of everyone. Um, and also, uh, Will to Will Piper, a good uh, yeeting buddy of mine. Hey, and also, <laughs> hey, a bit of a shout out to, we've had Charlie Roscoe join this week, which is going to be good. Hope to see him on the track. Yeah, oh. I was looking forward to seeing him race this, um, this round. I've, I've part of his uh, Discord group and his uh, YouTube, watched a few of his videos on YouTube. Um, he tends to host some really good one-off events throughout the year, uh, although he hasn't been able to do so many this year with a couple of our commitments outside of sim racing, but yeah, he's definitely going to be one to watch um, next season. So is that another yes. Div 1 guy joining? I heard he's pretty quick, so that would be great if we see him up with the Division 1 boys, that'll be awesome. We might need to start having a Div 1 A and B. Yeah. Yeah, nah, we, just keep, we, just, we just have to keep it as it is and just have another lobby just bust it down. Just for the guys <laughs> who want to... Go to... Yeah, Division 7 becomes Division 8 and so yeah. forth. <laughs> we just That's good to so big. Well, we just got to work harder. Like, now I've just got to work extra hard to come up to, like, Div 1. Like, I thought I'm, I might have been on yeah. the pace. Like, uh, so last year's season, most... In but, we had last year's most improved driver, Squidly, who's um, he's really worried about getting pushed down into Division Two, with the amount of talent we've had join up. 
you know, recently in this season. So yeah, it's it's definitely getting competitive up in the top lobbies. Yeah. Well, I, I think where he's at, he's he's very safe for Div One for next season. Definitely, he's what's he in now? Like fifth, uh, eighth at the moment. Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely yep. guaranteed Div One next season. But yeah, in terms of improvement, I reckon shout out to to Suit Lab. He's currently a Div Three oh, leader and he's man. up in thirteenth overall. This season, amazing season, driving in uh, the, yeah the Premier League most uh, most lobbies uh, yeah. this season, right? Yeah, he's done. He's, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's been this inside, I think, round two. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Big improvements from him. No, I think he might I, might. I think he might actually take it out. The be, um, biggest improve, uh, improvement would be Sulad. But he definitely showed yeah. some pace in um, the preseason as well. Yeah, I think that's really when he started to stand up a lot. Was uh, was in that one make series. He was really mixing it with everybody, with, with all the quick guys and the deep one guys from from then. And he just carried that on through uh, through season six. But you know, I mean, as competitive as division uh, like Premier League and Division Two are, like a lot, it's so competitive. Like from you know Division Three down down to f- five, those guys are so tight, man. It's it, it's very like if you look at the qualifying times this week, um, from like say division two down to division four, very, very competitive times. Yeah, agreed. And even some of the recent races, race one. So it's not even the reverse grid races. Races one, we've had some some guys from div four, five, post top twenty times overall for yeah. for race one in the last few rounds. Yeah. So I think yep. Macca, it's. Bar all the round before Spy, I think was 16th in the first race. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's just competitive all over. Mm. It just shows that um, even though you might be in Division Four, Division Five, doesn't mean you're a, you're a slow driver. Man, Figo just had a three second penalty to burn. I'm not sure we missed yeah. where he picked that up, but unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah. This guy's going to come into pits over the looks of it. In Figo, it started to really mean a little bit too. It was, the gap had been under under 10 seconds at that point. So it's just blown back out again. Mm. Madrushki just, just burnt half a second at Mulsan as well. So that brings Soul Slayer back into the fray a little bit there. The field sort of started to spread out at the moment. I wonder if um, any of these drivers here will be able to make a, a late charge towards the end of the race. Because you're at that... At that point in time now, um, at lap 10, where you just want to run your own race, you don't want to be caught up too much into any battles or anything like that. But I'm wondering if uh, any of these drivers here in Division 4 can make any inroads later on in the race with any pit strategy or anything like that. I think the biggest thing is going to come into, especially um, Ben and Vigo, is this going to be it's that mind games at the moment, like you know. If I'm in Fargo shoes, I'll be looking at that lead going, ah, oh, crap, you know, 14 seconds. That's a long way ahead of me. Like, what can I do to get a bit better? Or how can I make it a bit faster? And that's where mistakes come in. And, you know, Ben's probably decided to do that tactic just to break him and, like, just so, you know, potentially increase the chances of making mistakes. So Ben's in. Fargo, Ben's in. So if Fargo goes around and doesn't make it, makes it clean, you know, watch for the last couple of laps where, you know, Ben's going to be on potentially a four-stop um, for a lapper and with one year old tyre oh, not one year old one lap older tyres and Fargo is going to start smashing out those times yeah man it's so, I find it so tr- tough to keep track of these pit strats it's not until the last um, pit stop where you really get to see where how, how it's paid off and it's another three lapper for Benjamin Disco Filled up to 75%. Well, Madrisic, is that Madrisi around in the back? Yes, he is. Madrisi's in the wall. Can we get a replay of that? Finally. Oh, yeah. In fifth spot. Gosh. Final chicane, I think it is. Yep. Yeah, four chicane. I'm lucky, yeah, man. Yeah, down to six. Yeah. All right, let's hit up a replay on that. Yeah, coming through the final chicane. Looking good. Oh, wow. He's just... That, that was unexpected. He just... That car just seemed to spin on the on that last chicane. Um, little too much gas and just lost it a little too easily there. How, how are his tires? You guys got his tires are pretty much um, even. 
his eyes are really even, but I know because uh, I did a 22 lap uh, practice race with uh, Tank, and Tank, when he was on, the, on that accelerator, the, that Citroen just dances on its rear wheels. And right. every time, especially around those um, some Ford chicanes right at the end, um, yep. it, it, he would send it in the slide, and I'll be like, Tank, how the hell are you holding on to it? Mm, interesting. So, yeah, that's just the characteristics of the um, Citroen. Well, if Tank's got the yeah. hang of that Citroen, man, Footner might might uh, be a little concerned about his race next week. It's going to be a good one to watch. Oh, he's, got, he's, got, he's got time to practice, though. That's the main thing. True, true. To see Footner running a couple of lobbies, running a couple of practice races throughout the week, I certainly will definitely be running a couple of race practices throughout the week. So, um, have we got any more driver bios from this division? we got in here we might have one from oh no we don't have one from dodgy got one from luminous here we want to oh yeah let's get jump on board, board with luminous. luminous yeah right yeah so luminous i'm a 66 vintage making me 21 years old with a fair amount of experience moved to my domestic ex executive and kids from south africa to new zealand in 2008 and loving every minute of it I currently work as a contracts manager for Goodrick Contracting, a civil contractor in Rotura. Having been a motorsport fan since growing up to watch F1 racing at Kailami back in the mid-70s, I've become a huge fan of MotoGP, World Superbikes and BSB as well as the Isle of Man TT. Love watching the Aussie V8s. We'll go to the old class, classic drags. Got my first motorcycle when I was 16 and had one ever since, just about. These days, I ride a Triumph Tiger Sport. I've been on Grand Tourism since it was released on PS1, always on the controller. Managed to eventually scrape enough together to purchase a second-hand G29 in 2019. Haven't haven't looked back, but wouldn't mind the Thrustmaster. Hmm. Awesome. Nice bit, bit of uh, mix there with a bit of South African and a bit of um, New Zealand there from Luminous. So. Mm, definitely, and I got to admit, like stepping up from a G29 to something like a Thrustmaster or a Fanatec, yeah, definitely helps you out. Oh man, like yeah, I mean GT Sport. It's it's. I remember playing it like the earlier versions on the controller, and uh, I never ever thought about getting a wheel. And um, it wasn't until a, a friend just lent me his G25. I think I was like, damn, this is like this is next level next level and then um you know i knew i had to hand it back to him so i was like researching the wheels and it got the what did i end up buying i bought the t300 which uh overheated on the first night so I'd, i loved it but wanted something like the t300 that wouldn't overheat so i just took it in upgraded for the tgt and man it just it takes the game to a whole new level when you upgrade from a controller to a to a wheel um and uh, Dale, you'd know all about that. You've you've gone all the way with your <laughs> yeah. I, um, I kind of went all that drive. I, um, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I only got the G twenty nine maybe what March April this year. Um, kind of at the start of everything heading into lockdown, and um, yeah, just just was enjoying it so much, and I just figured that I was kind of getting the most out of the G twenty nine that I could, and I was like, you know what? If I'm going to upgrade, I may as well go top spec, so then I don't need to worry about it again for nice. another few years. Yeah. Um, yeah, you best decision I've ever made. Two years for a direct drive wheel. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? You're only hoping for two years to have your direct drive before you need to upgrade again, are you? Well, I, I view it a bit more like a computer, where if you buy top spec now, it's going to stay more relevant longer. Whereas if I just upgrade to the next level, it, it's going to become obsolete quicker. Hmm. But yeah, it's a big difference, isn't it? It's like it's uh. Ooh. Yeah, your direct the settings are so the... much customizable, and you just get so much more feedback just from everything. Yeah, um, I, I felt with the a... G39, you get that feedback through because it's got the gears or the belts or whatever. You can just hold it and pull against it, and it didn't really quite have that have the right impact out of it. And just yeah, the pedals I think were probably the even bigger difference. Just the V3 pedals, yep. so much better throttle control than what you can get out of the 29s. Yeah, the 29s feel like they've got like a centimetre of um, throw with their brake pedals. 
Gosh, yeah. I found those, those Logitech's really difficult, man. Well, I gotta admit, I wish I could do my uh, qualifying again because after a really disappointing qualifying for myself, um, I think it was Captain that convinced me. Captain Low Size, the big shout out to Captain, the um, South, uh, sorry, South Australia that lives in Victoria, um, told me to like put because Adam B10 actually lent me his Fanatec, his CSL Elite, and so it literally changed over that night and straight away it made a one second improvement. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> like first first lap on the Fanatec, one second free run of a qualifying time, and I was like, aww. And then, yeah, <laughs> just ran consistent. I was so angry with myself. Yeah, like Footnote was saying too that, like, the difference between getting a good wheel and, like, an average wheel is almost like the difference between, like, the DS4 and, you know, your, your entry level sort of wheel. You know, like, so upgrading from a, a, a G, a Logitech G29 to a you know, a Fanatec or a TGT, he says, he, he was saying that was like as big a difference as like a controller to a wheel. Yep. And um, I'd have to agree, man. Like when I, when I, if I compare the TGT to the uh, Logitech G25 I, I first used, massive difference, man. It just, it immer- the, a good wheel just immerses you in the game. You feel everything. You feel the ripple strips, the, the feedback through the wheel. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah, got to, got to agree with that. I mean, for most of the season, I was on the G29 getting maybe 400 points around, and then round 10, I think things really started to click on the Fanatec and cracked mm. over a 500-point round for the first time ever. So, nice. yeah, 100%. 100%. Wheel, wheels, you've also got wheels that, got that, uh, that mentality as well of just sitting in your seat using a wheel and driving. That You just... It's just something you don't get out of a controller, and just it just makes the the realism that much better. Yeah. Also, I had to get an upgrade to the rig because of the wheel too. So I think that also plays right. a big part. Getting something comfortable. Yep. To yeah, that's to listen too, through, for sure. through those hour and a half races and stuff. It's it's definitely needed. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, I remember using a little A-frame rig with my TGT and uh, having an office chair and wheels that you just roll around when you break. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> like, I never thought I never thought I was a, a serious enough racer to ever invest in a, a sim rig. But um, um, yeah, now I'm on the uh, what have I got a track racer rig? You know, thanks to yeah, it's the guys here in Wheel to Wheel. It's just it's um, yeah, that can make a massive difference just on. Yeah, it's just yeah, I, I never would have thought to get a rig ever. But um, they can also make a massive difference to your driving experience. No, I, th- I think that's the biggest. Th- that's the biggest thing as well with the equipment. You want the experience, the, the driving experience, the feel of being yep. in a proper seat, and the feel of pushing against pedals. Just a controller, or not even like a, a cheap wheel set, could beat that. Like I'm, I'm on mm-hmm. a G29 myself as well, and I am looking to. I'm looking to upgrade to a, a Fanatec or even a Thrustmaster. I've just yeah. got to find the money to do it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, ZD, so maybe, maybe you can back up this comment that I was making a few weeks back that if you go back to the G29 now, it's really going to feel like a toy in comparison to what you've just stepped up to. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I, I, I know that comment's been thrown around a lot in the world lately. Um, but yeah, I think it well, will feel like. Sorry to interrupt like... you in there. Sorry to interrupt you, ZD. Uh, Gas and Greg has just done a big spin after the Dunlop Bridge. Uh, not sure if we're going to get that on replay, but he was stuck in the sand, and Viking's going to get past him. Unlucky, yeah, Gas and Greg. We can bring that up. Let's have a look at the replay there. So, on board with uh, Gas and Greg. Oh, yep. Man, it's just clipped the edge of the track, spun into the sand. Costly mistake. Vargas also and picked up a 1.5 second penalty down the Mulsan. Yep, I think he picked that up coming onto it. Um, judging by this, Benjamin Disco, he, he might actually make this extra pit stop work. He's, he's now almost 20 seconds in front. Yeah, I'm... I'm he's due to be in this lap, I think, again, but... Yeah. Guys, also, just jump back onto gassing Greg. Has he only taken tyres and not fuel, or is that just a GT? Yeah. 
I so he's running awfully slow down Mulsanne at the moment. He's got fresh tyres, but he looks like he's empty oh, on no. fuel. Yep. He's, yeah, he's running in second gear at the moment. 115, 100 and... Oh, yeah. man. That's a... Yeah, he's out of fuel, isn't he's, he? He's, that, that's the out of fuel speed limit, is it? Yep, no, it's not, I that's think not so. out of fuel, David. No, that's out of fuel speed. I think. I think it's 80 for fuel, if you're out of fuel. Ah, uh, oh, okay, man. so he's just above it now, but he's in second gear... Cruise around about 100 up. Oh, it's going to be a big ask for him to get back through. That's that's going to be a that's the longest <laughs> oh, lap. Oh no! Right These enduros, man, they could just mess with your head, or you just press the wrong button in the pits and. Uh... Yeah, for sure. For that, sure. I, that's that was unlucky, my biggest yeah. fear. Is that pressing the wrong button, like especially when you're feeling up. I'll just like don't press X, don't press X, and you, you get <laughs> you get you get the urge to because you see someone who's on a different strategy, like Tombo who's on a different strategy, and you're like, all right, let's press it and then go. So it was it was difficult not to go, not to make a mistake, and even especially when you're coming towards the later part of the track, like the later part of the race, like right now, I'm past halfway, you start losing when you got to go into pits, like, um, yeah, you just get so immersed in the race, you're just like. Just little mistakes like that could cost him. And as you can see, Gas and Drake's it's costing him his race completely. That's very unfortunate there for Greg. He was he was running quite well. Him and uh, Viking were having a really good battle there towards the tail end of the field. But um it's good to... So this guy's coming out right in front of Figo side by side now into the first chicane. So yeah, Figo's only just taking the lead, so Disco's essentially got that pit stop back that that extra bit stopped back now. Yes, he has. So maybe the three three rappers isn't working. I wonder what Benjamin here is thinking. Well, I mean, uh, he's yeah, he's kept right with him. He's made the extra pit stop, but he's actually going a lot quicker. Figo seems to be picking up a penalty um, every few laps at the moment. He's just not quite getting that that same rhythm that this goes in. So in race terms here in the lobby, he's gonna. He's really holding up at the top of the field, but um, in terms of the overall time, surely you, you would be thinking about the overall time, especially an enduro like this. Did you see? Yeah. Do you mean take the pass from Fargo down the Mulsanne into Forza? But you so, still want bragging rights, to be honest. Yeah, I mean they're both going to come in at the, on the same lap next time through, judging by the amount of fuel that they've got left. So yeah, if it keeps on this way, this guy's probably going to have a I don't know, maybe about a five second lead by the time they come in. I'd be thinking about the overall time though if I was Benjamin and weighing up whether these extra stops are going to help him out in terms of the overall. Yeah, like I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it will, but I'm also wondering how heavy that Lambo could be on its tyres. Maybe he's just struggling with rear tyre grip on that fourth lap. Well, they're too wide oh, going to the next chicane. Absolutely battling. This, oh, and Benjamin just loses the rear end there. Uh, this is some crazy stuff here at the front of the field. You usually have a bit of a cooler head there, Fibers. What would you do? Would you go for bragging rights or would you just go, uh, calm down, just think about you know breaking markers and just keep it going? Sorry, guys, I just got back. Uh, I, I, I missed the last couple of minutes. I've no, been on with Benjamin I'm... Disco for the... Just in case you've been wondering. Um, yeah, what have we bragging missed? Bragging rights, fine moves. You like bragging, bragging rights, rights or you like your own? Yeah. Well, so right, right now, so, so what do you do if you're Benjamin Disco? He's made up the... Fill me in. He's definitely made up the... Um, Dang, you're right, crazy. you're right. So like Benjamin Disco right, right, right on right the... Now. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell still at this stage of the race, right? We don't know what the... I don't know how many pit stops either of these guys have got. They're both going to come in on the same lap next time through, so I think in a lap, what is it, 17, I think it is? In a lap 16, well, I think they're both going to come in on. Man, I mean, I guess if I was Benjamin Disco, I would just sit behind and save fuel and then make the last pit stop a killer a killer jump. Like, he should be able to leapfrog, you know, a second or two if he can just save a bit bit of extra fuel. That would be my game plan. 
His fuel is a little bit low by the tiniest of margins to Figer at the yeah. moment, so maybe that Lambo is a bit thirsty. It is a V10. I'm pretty sure it's a V10 in the Lambo. Not that engine size really matters here in GT, but I'm pretty sure those Lambos still carry a V10. Um, Gassing Greg has just made it to the pits with uh, four litres of fuel left, so he's done an amazing job to go around and lap... Um, lap Lasarth with uh, very little fuel so well done to him so eight laps to go we're a bit over halfway through the race man yeah I, get, I think I guess if I was Benjamin Disco I'd be just sitting in the slipstream well he's lost a bit of lost a bit on those on that chicane he's out of the slipstream now so yellow flag yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. yep okay What do you do? It's dodgy. That's not dodgy. Who is that? Who came out no, of the pits? No, it's Gus and Greg. Greg came Gassing out of the pits. Ah, Lapped he's being out. lapped, is he? Right, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe he, he ran did. out of fuel pretty much. Ah, uh, that's right, yep. I know. I spun after Dunlop Bridge and then ran a, a seven minute lap time, a seven minute eight, so very competitive there from uh, Greg. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can put it together now. He's just run purple um, on sector one. He's trying to extend that gap, so let's see, you know, he's seen Benjamin Disco come out right with him, so let's see if he can yeah, head down and put some really strong, consistent laps together now. Yeah, cool, we'll jump in cockpit cam with uh, Figo and let's, let's, let's watch him finish this lap. I've got to say, Luminous and Madriski are in a little bit of a battle oh. here at the moment. Madriski... He's sh shown some early pace, but um, just hasn't been able to capitalise. Looks like he's had a few penalties he's had to serve and deal with throughout his race. Tell you what, I still haven't figured out the track limits on this on this track. Uh, could have sworn Figo got a penalty there, but he's looking sweet still. Yeah, some, some laps it seems like it's a bit of a mystery. Other times you swear you, you're fine and then you get a half second. Just having a look at the buyers. Just see if we've got any more buyers for anyone here in this race. We did have um, who was the guy that dropped out? Lost his he either disconnected or. I'd like a true boss. True boss. He may have a, may have a bio. I think he had a bio. Nah, I'll just, I'll just no. the race. No, I'm not seeing one here. Okay. I wonder if you go through Scoot 82's bio because he's he's unfortunately yeah. had to miss this round though. So I mean Scoot 82, sure. the, the, the number might uh, throw you off a little bit, but you know he's he's been competing since season one. He won season one in Super Formula as well as the season two Group Three Championship. Um, so you know he's been around since the beginning. Um, he believes they'll Rick Kelly esque in that he didn't win many races but was just consistent enough to, to finish towards the to finish at the top of the of the standings. Uh, he says he hasn't won an overall race on on overall time since season two. So you know he believes it's been been a little bit of. Been a, been a long time since he's really been a true front runner, but you know he's been a consistent Div One driver since then, from what I understand. Um, he thinks he's one of the youngest youngest entrants. He's only 21 years of age, so you know the 82. You supposed to think that's the year he was born. He's, he's actually a lot long, lot younger than that. Um, he has been playing GT though since he was a kid, and basically spending all that time on controller and. He decided to upgrade to a G29 a few months ago. I think he won one a few months ago. So, um, you know, lucked into that one. So, well done to him. Um, he comes from the deep south of NZ in, in Vukagul and spent the last four years in Dunedin in university studying commerce. And he's actually uh, managed to graduate and get a job straight out of university in one of the largest accounting firms in the world. So, it uh, looks like he's spending a lot of a portion of his spare time in uh, with work you now instead of Gran Turismo. So, you know, he's going to be a member and a regular competitor in this league for a long time to come, and you know the, the league's going to be better for it. He's the Definitely, other man. The other Definitely man. Definitely man. Scooter is actually he's he's if you look at on uh, on our uh, wheel to wheel uh, earnings, like the, everyone's virtual bank accounts, he's earned the most prize money out of every member in wheel to wheel. So 
and that can only happen if you've been here from the beginning and done well in every season so he's 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 been the biggest biggest uh money earner here in Wilter Wheel and By a half um, a million. yeah man dude I'm surprised he's 21 he's got a voice like Barry White he's, he sounds like he's <laughs> does not sound like a 21 year old that agreed I can't believe he's 21 like that's kind of like throwing me back in my seat and like holy crap yeah that's so sad nice. make each other making their pits um, Disco was about eight tenths to Figo in the Forge Cane, so um, Disco started to make some time back up on Figo, or Figo is maybe running to a lap time at the moment. Well, they're coming out. They've got six laps. Oh, this is going to be the yeah, approximately six laps to go. You know, they're going to be on the same strategy. So, you know, good on uh, Benjamin and Disco. That three lap uh, strategy has worked. And they're basically matching times through the first two sectors of this lap as well. And uh, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see when they come into the pits, though. I think um, Fargo's still managing to save that little bit extra, even though he's not in a slip. So Dodgy is sitting a good 17 seconds back. I think he's got Gas and Greg ahead of him. But, yeah, Dodgy's running his own race here. And then I'm still... And then we got Luminous... What, 30 Luminous seconds up. behind. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm still very interested in this Soul Slayer mid risky kind of mid pack battle. Like, mid risky was. He started off really strong. It's going to be interesting to see where these guys well, uh, come Jack's out. Well, got about five seconds on mid risky at the moment, so. Um, it's yep. Very, it's going to be very interesting to watch towards the end of the race to see whether. Um, yep. Um, Jack can hold position or even fight Soul Slayer for top five as we see Disco has just taken the lead past Figo um, heading up towards Indianapolis I think Mac is going to have a bit more problems Luminous will be coming in coming in for his stop this lap and that'll put him pretty much right with Maca. Ooh, Ooh, the land of the baby. Oh, fuck Figo almost up the inside. That's a leap, jeez. This, this thing is heating up. Um, has anyone driven those two cars? Like, I, I haven't done any seat time in the Lambo or any seat, um, seat time in the Peugeot. So, have any of you guys driven those cars and tell us a little bit about their characteristics? Because it seems like Gosh. that Lambo is just tricky as hell. Not really. I've always wanted to do a season in the Lamborghini I think it's the GR3 is probably I th I, I always used to think it was one of the most difficult cars to drive um, I, but, I have uh, driven the Lamborghini in Seto Corsa and it is very tail happy in Seto Corsa so yep. I think it's just one of those cars where the uh, the engine in the mid engine rear engine mount just sort of takes a mind of its own when it comes to the, the rear end grip so yeah Oh, we get Benjamin's in for a pit stop. Fire goes in. Let's check the fuel comparison here. Fire goes a little bit more. Touch more. Yeah, but like Benjamin pulled nearly two seconds in that last three sectors. That's ridiculous. He's got some ridiculous speed in that Lambo. Yeah, Figo I think was down three seconds on his best time by the end of that lap too. So it's needs to keep it together for these last six laps. Dodgy's in as well. Dodgy's in as well. He's got about seven litres left in that Aston. Yeah, I think Luminous will be following his flashing red at the moment. Though Soul Slayer, Maka, and Madrissi all on different strategies, they're going to stay out. Going to be interesting to see here if um, Gassing Greg plays a little bit into. Figo's hands here being the lapped car. I think it might play it into Benjamin's hands and just give him that boost he needs because he's just pinging it up now and almost on straight. So, you know, I think this will be perfect for him. While well, we've got a little bit of break in the action at the moment, um, guys, what's 
what would you like to see in uh, season seven? Firstly, myself, oh, man. I'd like, I'd like yeah, to see probably. It, I'd probably like to see a little bit longer races. Maybe, maybe even try a new category. I know the Group Three, Group Fours we've had for the last couple of seasons, but I'd like to see maybe I'd know. We did Group Twos in the off seasons, and maybe maybe we we'll see the, the prototypes make a showing, or even even we go to road cars, have a road car season. But I'm definitely definitely a bigger fan of the, the longer race format. Um, yep. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I mean, personally, I would love a one-make series of of, 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 of some sort. Uh, that'd be awesome. MX5. But also the <laughs> Friday nights, yep, there we go. We jump in Friday nights for a bit of that. But no, I'd love to do a one-make series. That'd be great. Or all the road cars, like you were saying, they're untouchables. Um, love those N300, N400s. We could race the yeah. um, we could race the Supras, the new Supras, with the with all their tail happiness on on some um, hard tyres. That'll be a bit of fun. Come on, boys, drive a proper car like an S two S two thousand. Yeah, Dale, look, I, any yeah, look I, I, season I, seven? I agree with the longer races. I, I do enjoy the the longer formats, and the Enduros are probably some of the most fun rounds of the season. I mean. If we had Spa as an enduro in the Group Fours, like oh, uh, that we had, to, fun, that, that would have been insane. Yeah. That would have been intense the whole race. Um, look, I, I don't that, mind the categories. I, I do enjoy the proper race cars though. So, yeah, Group Three, Group Four, even Group Two or LMP ones, even. Um, yep. Yeah, one make. I'm, I'm down for almost anything there, but I think longer races is is the way to go. Okay. So less because we do the we do like two to th- we're doing three races on most rounds, aren't we? Two reverse grids plus a thirty minute race. Uh, so you'd prefer well, like one race a week well, maybe if it was longer. Well, at the or... mo- well I mean, at, at the moment, the enduro, the normal enduro rounds are only an hour long, which is essentially the same amount of time we spend across the three races in the normal yep. rounds. So yeah, maybe even just if, if it's just like a, a shorter, um, you know three to five lap race and then a longer 45 minute race and then the well, you enduros could, you could just do more enduro races instead of like yeah. only every third or fourth season, round maybe maybe, maybe every second season, round could maybe. Be. But yeah sure I mean at the moment we've only been doing endurance races every fourth round so I mean you could bump that up do it every third right, or right. Every second the endurance races the endurance races, this is what happens, where it's not that much excitement, everyone's all spaced out, and, like, the, I think the one-hour format's about right. Like, you know, you, you go back to Spa. Like, how exciting was that? Like, throughout all the races, everyone was talking about it. It was such close racing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was about right. I think it was a bit longer than this. I think it was a bit longer than an hour, and I don't think that competitiveness would have been there. Also, like... this. He's got Greg got behind him. The Lamborghini, here we go. He's the front Benjamin runners. Disco. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. He's so pulling he's aside. Pulling, pulling over. He's pulling if over. If you do more Enduros, I think you just got to... We're going to choose the tracks right. Ones that are going to um, encourage close racing the whole way. Kind of like we saw in Div 2 earlier tonight at this track. Mm, yeah. I mean, we've got some really good Enduro tracks here on GT Sport. Like Bathurst can always make a good Enduro. Catalonia would be good, wouldn't it? Spa might even make a good good enduro. We've got uh, the Nurburgring last Troy. season. The Nordschleife was a bit bit long and again spaced out a bit. Everyone in the way we run our our fuel and tire burns Damn. sort of made it a yeah. I loved that, that one, man. Oh, I loved the twenty four hour Nurburg Nordschleife. That was fantastic. Oh. Favorite track, hands down. Favorite track because you like yeeting people there, Fimus. Oh yes, <laughs> boys, gonna have to post a link to that. The yeet, yeet of the year. Oh jeez, yes, yeah, definitely. Oh, Flossie, um, yeah. Flossie's reaction was just classic. We'll have to post a link to that. It's in. Oh, it's it's in the announcement it's somewhere, like, but yeah. Yeah, well, you oh, had man, to that was hilarious. <laughs> that got it. Got all of us. That was so bad. Yep. What 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 was going through your mind there, Fibers? Because you were at like 
Drink out, yeah, that was Corinna Cup. You're absolutely... Man, I wanted to eat you. All I was saying is I wanted to eat ZD. And, I don't know, man, I'd busted out, like, a, a, a big lead on the Nordschleife and maybe a 15-second lead. So at the end of the straight, just decided to do a U-turn and um, fly straight at everyone. And, man, for some reason, it didn't ghost, and I just caused some major carnage. I, I smashed into about three or four cars head-on down the back straight of the Nordschleife, which, which was uh, a big highlight for me this year. Yeah. I gotta admit, you, you cleaned up low side. Like, I thank goodness I have reactions. <laughs> because the moment that uh, Flossy darted, I darted as well. I just saw this quick flash mm. of headlights. And I think you could you clipped my rear corner, but you went head on with low side. Oh, man. it's I was just surprised I didn't ghost, like, <laughs> driving backwards. But oh, it anyway, was such a, no, that was, such a, good that was a bit of fun. Don't understand why in Corona Cup everyone wants to eat me. Mm. Oh, dude, because you are the it's, king it's of yeeting. It's yeety.com. <laughs> oh, come on. It's kind of like in the, in the rural races I don't yeet. Even though I, had, I did some massive yeah. moves with you jury today. Um, well, yeah. yeah for, for, I mean, Don't Corona Cup practice? doesn't... Corona Cups, I mean, it's a bit of fun for the guys on Friday night. Have a, have a few drinks and just... A bit of carnage doesn't necessarily represent the quality of driving here in God's Will. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, that's sort of... I haven't joined into a um, Corona Cup race yet, but... Um, I think it's just one of those sort of little mini shoes where the boys can let their hair down. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun on a Friday shoulders, night. That's it. So an official Corona Cup season's off the, off the table then? <laughs> oh, he's... <laughs> Figo, hey, back, back up front. Figo's now... Figo's closing the gap. Quickest second. lap. Purple lap of 56.3. That's, that's quick. That's quick, yeah. Four laps to go. Boys, this is it. Crunch time. But where's the time gone by? Oh, like, it's man. We're 18 laps in, and like, the tell action... You what. They're both coming in next this... lap, too, at the end of this lap. Man, I tell you what, Benjamin Disco is going to feel the pressure here, I think. These last three laps. Nearly 90 Fire minutes Fire in. Fire Fire needs to just stay it's... behind him right now. He's going to jump him in the pits, based on the fuel burn at the moment. I honestly think um, Disco would have maybe had a much bigger lead. Had he maybe gone an extra lap? Save the fuel, sticks. man. Just, I'd just be sticking behind there, behind Disco at the moment. Oh, he's gone, going for it. He's going for it. That slip has helped. Oh, by the way. They're both it's running the same speed here. Who's going to give up going into the fours of chicane? Yeah, no. They, 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 they are wheel to wheel. Oh. <laughs> they both make the corner. The nice. Lamborghini yields. Nice Oh, that was, was a mad game. Got these all oh, waxy. Has Fargo's breaking the slip? Has Fargo's breaking the slip? Nah, he's ooh. Yeah, he's in it. Oh, he's got the slip. Nah, he's just, just in it. He's just in the tail of it. But he ain't. He's he's not sitting he's in the slipstream. He's off to the side. This could be him. This could be yeah, catastrophic. Yeah, that was interesting. He doesn't even need it in that Lamborghini. Yeah, he, he oh, it. it could be catastrophic for fuel burn, though. Right. Yeah, because he's already down on fuel as it is, so you need to save every little bit you can now, but... Yeah, oh, man. It's an odd one. This could be an exciting... No, fine. Exciting fine, fine, finish. Well we'll have to get so... Dodgy into the box at the end of the race and just see how he's going after this. He's, done, he's logged out 19 laps. He's about 26 seconds behind Disco and about 21 seconds ahead of Soul Slayer. Man's been man's been out on an island with no ore, and no food, no drink. <laughs> I don't see him laughing again, but Figo is Figo's on purple still, so he's really motoring. Good lord! Dodgy's got Wilson, his little soccer ball to keep keep him company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Dodgy's in chat with all, with all with the other guys from the lobby though, so at least they'd be giving each other encouragement. I think. Yep. Oh man. Back to ask him, make sure he, he realised that this was the real race and not just a, another practice session. 
I still still can't purple believe. for Figo. 0.050 up. Yeah. Benjamin has fallen out of the slipstream and his tyres look pretty rough. Yeah, I'd say that's why Disco's been doing three, three laps since those rear tyres just aren't holding up yeah, on the, on the yep, Lambo. Yep. Oh man, maybe we should do a quick run through the field. That battle for first, that is going to heat up for sure. So maybe we should, let's have, let's have a quick run through the field, boys. Who yeah, so we've Fargo. Fargo in the lead at the moment. He's got about 1.6 second lead over Disco. He sets another purple sector. Uh, Benjamin Disco in the Lamborghini, uh, about 1.6 seconds behind Figo in the um, Peugeot. Uh, third place got Dodgy86 in the uh, the Screw Loose Racing. Aston Martin, he's been running his own race all night. He's about 26 seconds behind the leading pack. Solslay up into fourth place in that uh, in that. Yeah, purple. great effort there, man. Jaguar there. Um, Again, running a pretty awesome race himself as well. He's about 29 seconds behind Dodgy, uh, and then about 13 seconds ahead of Luminous in the uh, the Porsche there in P5. Luminous again, he's run a very good race himself. He started down towards the back of the field, I think, guys. Um, yeah, he also had an off at the at Indianapolis straight on the yeah, fence hill in the race too. Yeah, as well, that was the big off there as well in lap one. So he's done a really good job to pick up into the top five. Sixth place, we've got Macajack in that BMW there. He's got about a six tenths of a penalty to burn at the moment through Arnage. Uh, he's about 37 seconds behind Luminous at the moment. Uh, in, eighth, in seventh place, Madriski in the orange and white um, Citroen showing some amazing pace early on the race, just hasn't been able to capitalise. Probably a few penalties. Uh, that Citroen being a bit thirsty there on the petrol there as well. Um, be interesting to see how he goes towards the, um, the end of this race here. Uh, eighth place Viking race. Uh, he's again another guy that's just been running his own race. Um, he was in a very tight battle earlier on with uh, Gas and Greg. Uh, but again, he's in that uh, blue Jaguar. He's about 14 seconds behind Madriski in the Citroen and rounding out the rear of the field so far. The last of the runners are gassing Greg. Um, unfortunate for him, a massive spin coming out of the Dunlop curve, or Dunlop um, bridge. Uh, lost a lot of time. Uh, he also forgot to fuel up as well for his uh, one of those stops there as well. So he was... Um, Doing a, a, doing a small coast around the uh, the French countryside there just to make it home. So, unfortunately, he's a lap down, but um, he's still chugging along and chugging away. Uh, we also had like a true boss in the lobby as well. Um, unfortunate for him, he did leave the lobby though halfway through lap one. Um, would have liked to see him um, kick on in that Audi. I'm sure he would have troubled um, the top the top few places here in that Audi but um, he chose to he chose to leave um, track limits just pushed him a bit too far but that is the field for Division 4 so guys you feel all about overall lap time do you think um, Figo or Benjamin Disco can beat the fastest time set so far which was Super Dragon's time was well, 1 hour 29 minutes and 40 seconds no, oh, I don't think the pace has been there you I think don't. at the start of the no, nah, not at the start of the race. I'm not, I'm just not sure. It's, I'm probably going to be wrong. Oh, actually, there we go. We've got a counter down there. Maybe I should just didn't realize that was there. Um, I take that back. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be quite close, actually. Yeah, I'll so I'm just well, Dragon yeah, right. had some um, hardware issues as well in his race, so um, so it'd be. He did an amazing job to finish the race in first, but there. Yeah, um, not sure if these guys have had any issues so far. Did but Super yeah. Dragon have to switch to a controller or something during that race? So, so three times throughout that race, he had to switch from uh, from his oh. wheel to a controller. To, so the last six laps, he did on controller. I can confirm that. I was in chat with him Damn. throughout the whole race. Um, oh man, it's like Brand yeah, Hatch saw- all over again. Yeah. So it just shows you the skill that we have in wheel to wheel with uh, Super Dragon just absolutely still blitzing Div 2, flicking from a wheel to a controller, back to a wheel, back to a controller. It was just ridiculous. 
Yeah, look for Dragon to upgrade his hardware again for Season 7. I don't know if he chooses to race Season 7. Um, yeah. He not long had upgraded to a wheel, so... Um, yeah, don't know what the troubles are with his wheel, but... It's it's tough for him. Yeah, what's he, what wheel's he on? I think he's on a... Um, T300, is it ZD? Or... I can't, I can't remember. He's on, he's on a Thrustmaster for sure. Yeah. I just can't remember okay. which one. I, th- I, th- okay. I think these guys are really on for a 1 hour 30 flat based on two laps to go and when they cross the line. Oh, I don't know. I, oh, yeah, maybe. It, was, it, was already, it was already past 22 when they crossed the line. So it's, what, 3 minutes 50, 57, 58 a lap at the moment? Yeah. 56, yeah. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty much 30 flat. It's gonna, no, it's gonna, I think it's going to be a 129, but it's going to be like a 50. So it might be, it might have been my time and um, intrinsic time. Yeah. Definitely not yeah, slow so, by any means. So Benjamin Disco, I mean, I'll have to have a look at the leaderboards, but I'm surprised to see him down in his lobby. He's got the pace, man. It'd be up Division yeah. two or three, yeah. right? Or maybe even being a privateer, he hasn't he hasn't raced every every race. Okay, yeah. So he's um he's yeah, yep. running that white back. He's now chasing the slipstream as well of our Figo, so um, oh. we're into the last two laps here of the race, so maybe he's just started to realise that he may not have the fuel to catch Figo in that um in that Peugeot. Mm. I don't yep. think it's really I don't think it's fuel. I think it's just you need it's all about position now. So you want to gain every advantage you can get and that slip just sucks you in and gives you that extra 10 kilometers that you need to chase someone down. I, look, I looked at this a little bit earlier, so Disco's only racing four rounds so far. At this point, we're already counting three, so I think projecting that out, he would have been in about, I don't know, somewhere in the 40s and, and up in the Div 3 lobby, maybe borderline Div 2. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah, it's Div 3 lobby. Uh, boys, my, comp- my laptop just died that I'm using at the moment, but I'm sure that there was a bio there for Midriski. Maybe we can fit that in before we get to the end of the race. Yeah, go for it, man. Let's jump on with Midriski. Yeah, Ooh, the half yeah. yeah, so, so Midriski, he's 50 years old. He's, he's been working in public service for the last 30 years. He is uh, from Queenbean or living in Queenbean at the moment, which for those who aren't aware, just on the border of the ACT. Um, not sure if that's the Squiddy, isn't it, ZD? Uh, yeah, Squiddy's just moved down to um, Canberra now, so yeah, he'll be living around there. Awesome, awesome. So Midriski, he was last active in the local theatre for about 18 years, last show in 2014. Uh, he's also been playing soccer since 1984 and still still plays it and loves Sorry, it. Sorry, but, but um, in the Dale, but um, Bender and Disco's gone around the outside and it's overtaking Brago for the lead. Damn. Nice move, replay? Disco. Replay? Should we go to a yes. replay? Yeah, it's that? worth it. 100%. All right, here we go. On board with Bender. Yeah, oh, he, yeah, there it is, down the straight. So kind of missed Disco's the lead up to that, but... Um, we got so the overtake, but um, well. um, Disco is purple by about seven tenths at the moment. That Lambo, so Disco's really pushing hard here wow. in the last few laps. Fire here we so go, gotta... man. Oh, are we going to get that mid risky buy a win? I don't know about that. I don't, I don't think we can go move away from this I battle. Don't finish it off for us. Oh, oh, finish it off oh, for oh, we've got to finish it. We've got to finish yeah, it. Yeah. Come on. So look, he, he, he here into BMW and he's been for a supercar drive back in 2015. Uh, he's also a gamer, um, but that should be given given the present company. He, he enjoys his online racing, uh, but the brake, brake pedal on the Logitech wheel just keeps activating in the worst places. So given it, it's clean, but it's still still playing up on him. So you know, he's happy to oh, test oh, his oh, skills. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> One and a half. Oh, that's going to kill him for and this again. last lap. And he's white through he's the white again. as well. Oh, no. He's still no. got a tenth to burn here. They could have handed it to yeah, Disco. Yeah, Disco's Three and a half seconds a... now. Four second, four second lead here. Oh, on the last lap. Oh, to be running running so well for an hour, nearly an hour and a half and then just to have the lead taken away from oh. you like that. You got a feel for Fargo. Soth! Just the penalties. That's what Ben made G29 um, this week. 
just don't tell me. You just run a little bit. It's, it's, little it's bit one of those wide, tracks I love to spectate and not race. The disco oh, put damn. in a 55. The disco put in a 55.5 um, for fastest what? lap of the race. That's that is one. insane. That's, That's only half a second off of his qualifying time. It's the Super Enduro. The best man wins. Benjamin Disco doing well under pressure. And for him to be running those three lap stints and to be running, he's going to really give Dragons time a run for his money on three lap stints as well, so that's crazy. Well, I like this. Damn. Final lap. What? Yeah, he's a bit too far back. Three and a half seconds behind. Bye, go. Yeah, I'm just looking at overall lap time. I think everyone's going to be looking at that overall lap time going, is it is it fast enough to beat um, Super Dragon's time? I think it'll be fast enough to beat my time, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, Dragon wants to have a very high... Um, oh, <laughs> drifts through the oh, corner. Oh, man. Let your hair out there, Benjamin. Why don't you? No, I, I think he's going to be pretty much right on right on the 30 minute mark we're about 2 minutes into the lap now and we've just gone 28.04 be close be close oh unfortunate fire just that last lap that just running a little oh, bit wide man. after the um, Porsche curves and just picking up that one and a half second penalty oh you've been oh, racing that's so that's heartbreaking close. he'll he was four seconds back as they crossed the line, and he's already he's already taken a second off that this lap. So, yeah, this would have been a cracker of a final lap. You know, you know, it's oh, I got to admit, I have to go back to the D two. It's almost it was like uh, Super Dragon esque with Super Dragon picking up that one um, point uh, five of a second penalty uh, in the final lap, where he had to burn it on the line to take out the win. So, yeah. Just one of those things. Oh. But it's just absolutely eating time out of Ben. He's like, Figo, Figo is absolutely smashing time like it's no tomorrow out of Ben. Oh. And then Dodgy here in third place. Again, he's just run his own race the whole time. Um. Well done. The top three here, we've got Disco, Figo, Dodgy, uh, or even just well done to the, well, everyone here in the lobby tonight that's raced through um, the Le Sarth Enduro. Again, I couldn't think of a better track to finish off. A uh, super exciting and super competitive season six here at Wheel to Wheel. Figo's picked up another second penalty as well. But here we go. Benjamin Disco Benjamin. through the final chicane. Oh, 1 minute 30, there we go. One thirty. Oh, 1 minute 30, 02 approximately. Take out the win over Figo, who's just unfortunately picking up those penalties in the last two laps. Yeah, unlucky Figo, he was... Yeah, he had the speed. He was keeping with, with Disco pretty much the whole race. Uh, but yeah, props to Disco. He ran an alternate strategy and paid off for him. And then a big shout out to Dodgy, he must be like hugging Wilson right now as he's about to cross the line coming through the um, final... We're here, we're finally here. Last week, Dodgy. <laughs> Another one and who's then... had a very lonely race is uh, so, uh, Warsaw Slayer coming through the uh, final chicane here. What were we thinking? Like me, I was like thinking, about, thank God, this race is over. I don't have yes. to worry about this. Who, who would have thought that the three-lap strategy would have worked out so well? I've I've tried it in practice, um, and it just doesn't work out. I just don't it, see the benefit. It, it's all about the guys around you. So Figo did pick up quite a lot of penalties. Every, every other lap, I think, was picking up penalties. So he lost a lot of time burning them. And Illumis just crossed the line in fifth place. As we got... Dale's um, teammate coming out the sixth. 
Yeah, well done, Maka. Overall, it's a difficult race, this this track, especially if you don't spend a lot of time on it. So I think, you know, Warsaw Slayer up in fourth, I think this was the, really the first week he'd really spent really any laps, especially in this car around here. So, you know, good result for him, good result for Maka there in sixth, crosses the line there, about 24 back behind Luminous, but, you know, 20 seconds clear of, of Madriski. So it'd be interesting to hear from Madriski later to find out how many times his uh, G29 brake pedal just... Uh, turned on for him for no reason yeah exactly and Madrushki has Madrushki coming across the line with a bit of damage there so he must have had a bit of a spin oh, wow. earlier okay and finally off the old man himself Viking Racer in the Jag uh, unfortunately just picking up a little bit too much penalties um, and that's what cost um, sending him out towards the back of the grid but you know he's had a great season this year so yeah around some solid lap times so though around the four minutes so um, again, he's just another guy that's just run his own race and he's just done the best he can. Um, 401 well one, that's his quick, quickest lap on the final lap. Well done, Viking. Way, way to finish off the race. Great work, Viking. So there we go. We got the race, dear race, tw- round 12, did four winner, Benjamin and Disco taking out, getting the three as well. Pole, fastest lap, and a clean race right there, running no mistakes whatsoever. With um, Fargo coming in the second place, unfortunately bringing up with those mistakes, and then Dodgy and Wilson himself uh, bringing up third place, running a very lonely race. Uh, hoping Dodgy jumps into the commentary box just so we can make sure he knew this was the real thing and not just another practice. Oh man, no, that was a great race, guys. Cracking race. Came really came to right in the end. Um, it's going to really match uh, race of the round for this this one. Yeah, it was awesome. And then, um, so we'll have uh, Viking commentating next week. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And uh, so we've got division, we've got Premier League, and Division Three and Division Five next week. So, yeah, we've got six. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, all six divisions being uh, streamed this for this final round. Um, yeah, boys. How'd you like it? How'd you like the round 12 here from uh, Division... What was it? Four? Tonight? Yeah, yeah Division Four. Uh, well, amazing race. Um, just shows that um, it can be great racing here in Wheel to Wheel right across the divisions and you don't have to be up with the Premier League boys to, um, to, to show your talent. So this will be a good watch back later on in the week. Definitely. Uh... I, I prefer actually watching it than being at it. Like spending that much time in my GT Sport, like an hour, an hour and a half racing, and then an hour and a half commentary. Prefer just co- um, talking about it and watching everyone else make the mistakes. Yeah, agreed on that. Like it's it's, it's a difficult race. It's going to be tough out there, but you know these guys put on a great show, and um, yeah, it, it was awesome, awesome work out there from all of them. Alrighty guys, well let's let's wrap up the stream and um, we'll see you all again next week for uh, the last three divisions for round twelve and a wrap up of the season. So yeah, thanks when's, everyone when's for this, when's yeah, this race so, in division six getting when's four and six oh, getting the, uh, this, division the, we should be streaming this one uh, maybe Tuesday night, but um, yeah, all six lobbies being streamed this week, so beautiful so be well everyone to... thanks thanks for watching and then since this is gonna be on tuesday enjoy the rest of your week and be prepared for next week where we have premier league division three and division five where we have mr bitter himself showing us how it's done <laughs> also <laughs> shout out quick shout out to um races here for presenting the final round of uh wheel to wheel um always great to have a sponsor on board um haven't checked out races um, products yet, but I'm sure they've got an amazing range of um, products ready and willing to um, to set you up to the next level of racing. Alrighty, guys, signing off. We'll see you all next week. Catch gotcha. ya.